It's Valentine's Day, and my girlfriend's favorite food is red velvet cake. So in order to keep it a secret, Max came over to my place, and we made his girlfriend Stephanie a red velvet cake for Valentine's Day. This week on Working Class Foodies. Red velvet cake is a southern cake made with just a little bit of cocoa powder and red food coloring. Commercial red food coloring is made with the crushed carapaces of a South American insect, which is not harmful and has no flavor, but it's not kosher or vegetarian or vegan friendly. Commercial red food dyes are also made with synthetic dyes. We wanted to keep our cake natural and vegan friendly, so we decided to make our own food dye using beets. So to make the dye for the red velvet cake, first what you want to do is wash and trim your beets. Put them in a pan and cover them by an inch with water and simmer for 30 minutes. Then strain and reserve the liquid. Peel and cut the beets and let them sit in the liquid for four hours. After four hours, restrain your beets and you've got plenty of natural red food coloring and beets for borscht. Now the only thing is that this naturally made red food dye won't hold its color forever, so use it fairly quickly. It's also good beet juice though, it's a great base for a borscht. Yummy. Borscht. Once we made the dye, it was time to make the cakes. First, preheat your oven to 350. And then butter and flour either two eight inch cake pans or one large springform pan. Because we used a springform pan, we buttered and floured a piece of parchment paper and lined the pan with that just to make sure the batter wouldn't leak through. Sift together your dry ingredients. This is two and a half cups of cake flour, one and a half cups of sugar, one to three teaspoons of cocoa powder, depending on whether you want your cake to actually have a little chocolate flavor or not. But keep in mind, the more cocoa powder you put in, the darker your cake will come out. A teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of salt. Sift and whisk this all together, and then set it aside. And then mix together the wet ingredients. Two large eggs, one tablespoon of room temperature butter, one and a half cups of vegetable oil, one cup of buttermilk, low fat is okay, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, two tablespoons of red food coloring, or a little more if you're using homemade food coloring because it is a little bit weaker, and one teaspoon of distilled white vinegar. And beat the wet ingredients together until combined and then slowly incorporate the dry into the wet until you have a smooth batter. Pour the batter into your prepared pans, either two 8-inch cake pans or one larger pan. It's okay if there are a few lumps in your batter, they will cook out, but for the most part you want it to be smooth. Bake the cakes, rotating halfway through until a toothpick inserted in the center of each cake comes out clean. Let the cakes cool for five minutes Then invert each cake onto a plate you are something else. and invert again onto a cooling rack. Now that our cake is out of the oven, it's time to let it cool completely before we can frost it. Red velvet cake is traditionally served with a cream cheese frosting, super easy to make. Combine 16 ounces of softened cream cheese with a tablespoon or two of milk, about a tablespoon of vanilla extract, and anywhere from one and a half cups to three cups of powdered sugar, depending on how sweet you like your frosting. I like to keep my frosting a little on the tart side so that I really get that cream cheese flavor and it doesn't compete with the cake for sweetness. Beat the cream cheese, milk, vanilla extract, and powdered sugar together until it's a nice, smooth frosting. Then refrigerate it for at least half an hour, ideally while your cake is cooling. If you made one large cake like I did, it's very easy to divide this into two cakes. Take a long piece of dental floss and wrap it around the cake facing away from you. And bring your hands together so that they cross. Make sure that your floss is lined up in an even line around the center of your cake and pull your hands apart to cut the cake in two. All you have to do Set the top layer of cake aside. If the sides of your cakes are uneven or overcooked, trace a circle on a piece of parchment paper and cut it out. Lay the circle over the cakes one at a time and carefully cut around them with a sharp knife. Then cover the top of your bottom layer of cake with frosting. 
Let this set for a few minutes, then carefully put your top layer of cake on top of your frosted bottom layer. Make sure it's all set evenly. Put a large dollop of frosting on top of your cake, and with an offset spatula, gently spread the frosting evenly over the cake. Make sure to get the size of the cake as well. Be gentle so you don't tear the cake. That's why it's so important that your cake is completely cool when you frost it, so that it doesn't tear. Let this layer of frosting set. Putting the cake in the fridge will help speed this process up. Then add a second layer of frosting just to thicken and smooth it out. The cake is delicious. Well, Max and Stephanie will show you how much they enjoyed it. We have this whole beautiful cake here. What do you think it costs, right? Like a commercial cake costs how much? $30, $40. $40, $50 in New York. Well, guys, guess what? This entire cake costs $9.70. And that, yes, is including the beets for making the red food dye. You know what that comes down to in an eight slice cake? A buck 22. We win. Valentine's Day is ours. Valentine's Day, working class foodie style. Let us know what you made for Valentine's Day and we will feature it on our blog. And we'll see you next week on Working Class Foodies. Love you. Hurts. Hurts. Hurts.